Hi guys. All right. Hi guys. Uh, I'm Ted. I'm going to be uh, showing you guys how to make some vinaigrettes today. It's December in San Antonio. So it is a wonderful time to be growing salads and salad greens. Um, so we're going to start off. I've got two recipes to show you guys. The first one is an apple cider vinaigrette. So let's get started. All right. So we're going to start out with two fluid ounces of apple cider. This can be uh, unfiltered apple cider is what I like to use. Uh, it's got that good, you know, wholesome apple taste. Then we're going to go in with two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. I like to use it with the mother. Uh, the mother is a bacterial colony that creates all vinegars and it's uh, got a lot of health benefits and it's, uh, it's a very good way to, uh, to have your apple cider vinegar. All right, we're going to go in with two, a half a teaspoon of, uh, I'm using ground mustard here. What this mustard is going to do is uh, it's going to act as our emulsifier. So we've all heard the saying that oil and water don't mix, right? Um, the way that we're going to make our oil and water mix is by using an emulsifier and agitation. So after we've got that uh, brown mustard in, we're gonna go in with some minced tarragon. So this is some tarragon that I grew myself in my garden. Uh, it's not quite the same as the French tarragon that you might see in the store. This is a, uh, an herb that grows really well in the San Antonio area. It can take our heat really well. It's called Mexican mint marigold. It's also called Texas tarragon, um, but it's very similar in smell and taste to uh, the regular French tarragon. It's just a bit stronger. So I'm gonna end up using a little less than I would for a standard tarragon. So we'll just uh, mince that up real quick. So I'm gonna go cut it on the... Uh, same direction as the leaves go, and then I'll just chop it up nice and fine. We don't want to go, like I said, it's a little stronger than your standard tarragon, so you don't want to go too heavy with this. Uh, if you're going with a, uh, a standard tarragon that you get in the store, you might want to use a little more. Uh, and then if you don't have access to that, you can also use dry as well. Just use a little bit more. All right, we're going to go in with a half a teaspoon of sugar. Uh, alternately, you could use a maple sugar or uh, some other uh, raw sugar as well. I'm um, going to do a little bit of, uh, all right, I'm going to grab my whisk real quick. So for this recipe, I'm going to use white pepper. White pepper is actually the uh, ripened uh, berries of the black pepper plant. It's, it's the same plants, just different stages of wort ripening. If you don't have white pepper, black pepper will be fine as well. So just a couple grinds in there. I, uh, I've also got some salt here that I keep in a salt keeper. I'm gonna do a little pinch in there. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna whisk this to combine, get, our, uh, get all of our ingredients nice and mixed, all right? All right, now the way we're going to incorporate this is we've got our oil here. Now we've got our emulsifier and we've got our, our, our uh, water-based liquid. So we're gonna start off whisking, just do a little drizzle in, a little bit at a time, and then start. you can start adding more and more, a little bit faster. You can see that you've got an emulsion forming when uh, the, it, it uh, starts to create a different color. All right, there we go. This is our apple cider vinaigrette here. Uh, got a nice nice sweetness, a nice little bite from the apple cider vinegar. Uh, really good for some nice salads. All right, the next recipe we're gonna do is a lemon herb vinaigrette. So these are uh, Meyer lemons. These are a little different from the lemons you get in the store. Uh, these I actually grew from my own tree. So these are uh, actually a little bit sweeter than your standard lemon. If you don't have a lot Meyer lemon, you can just use the standard lemon you get in the store. I'm going to strain these out because they're full of seeds. We're looking for about three tablespoons of lemon juice. Uh, if you're using a measuring cup, that's one and a half ounces, fluid ounces. All right. Almost there. A little more. All right. We're going to roll with that. We've got our lemon juice. I have here one tablespoon of white wine vinegar. Other vinegars would be fine as well. You just want to bump up the acidity a little bit. All right, I've got some parsley here that I grew in my garden. So we've got, you can use whatever herbs you want in this recipe. This is just what I happen to have on hand. 
I've got some flat leaf uh, or Italian parsley. I've got some onion chives. I've also made this with garlic chives as well. And then I've got some, this is a, uh, a Greek style oregano. We'll just chop up our herbs. Now, when I'm, when I'm using my knife, you wanna grab it with the blade, wrap your hand around the handle, because that gives you the best control of your knife. As I'm cutting, I'm, I'm uh, clawing my fingers to keep them away from the, uh, the edge of the knife. You don't wanna do that, you wanna do that. All right, so we've got our parsley. We're gonna go in with our onion chives. <laughs> All right, got our chives. Get in with our chives and our oregano. All harvested from my garden. The uh, herbs are a great way for you to just do a simple update to your cooking. Uh, maybe you're you not you're maybe not you're not don't consider yourself a great gardener, but uh, herbs are the one thing that you can get growing and a lot of them do really well in our area and need almost no care at all. Uh, like rosemary, oregano. I don't even water those guys in the summer. They, they do great in the heat and the drought. Uh, there's a couple ways you can dry herbs. Uh, you can buy yourself one of those fancy dehydrators, but a, an easy way to do it is you can just get cooking twine or standard twine and uh, hang them up anywhere where there's a good airflow and uh, just leave them there until they're dry to the touch and uh, take them down and you can um, take off the stems. You don't want the stems when you're processing them. You can just take the, the crushed leaves and put them into a jar, you know, like this uh, and label them. All right, so we've got our herbs, we've got our lemon juice, we've got our white wine vinegar. Now I'm gonna go in with a half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. This is just one, uh, there's all kinds of mustards you can do as, as long as the, the point of it is to provide that, like I said, chemical emulsifier. Um, that's just one more component that you can play with and uh, add your own spin on it. All right, so we've got our Dijon mustard. I'm also going to add a little bit of honey for sweetness here. You may, if you're using standard Eureka lemons from the store, you might wanna bump up the honey, depending on how sweet your lemons are. All right. Mix that up. All right, I'm gonna go with standard black pepper for this one. And a little bit of salt, not too much. All right. Now I've got two kinds of oil here. I've got standard olive oil, which is not extra virgin and an extra virgin olive oil. You probably don't wanna go for completely um, extra virgin because extra virgin by itself can be very strong tasting. Um, but any sort of mild oil, like a, like a non-extra -vir virgin olive oil, you can use avocado oil, you can use uh, grapeseed oil or canola oil. Those are all nice mild oils that are good for a salad. So same method as before, drizzle in a little bit to start that emulsification process. So I'm getting the motion. I'll go in with my other oil here. This is my extra virgin. And we're just adding a little bit to the flavor because we do we do like the flavor, but by itself, it's just a little bit overpowering. All right, there you go. Two great vinaigrettes. Uh, perfect season to be growing salad here in San Antonio. Uh, lettuce, endive, arugula, all kinds of wonderful greens are available this season. Uh, this is a great way for you, great healthy way to Get those greens uh, on your plate and, and uh, into your body, giving you all those nutrients that they have to offer. Thank you, guys. Uh, you can check me out on my website, tedveridian.com, or check follow me on Instagram, ted.viridian, B-I-R-D-I-A-N. Thank you so much for tuning in. Of course. One great way to try your vinaigrettes, uh, usually you don't want to just go in with a spoon, right? Um, I like to take a piece of lettuce or some other green and, and dip it into the, in the vinaigrette to try it. So let's go harvest some. All right, let's go. Yeah. What you got going on here? 
Okay, so he's what he's saying here is that we've got some uh, spinach growing here. This is Ashley spinach. So this is a type of spinach that uh, grows really well in the San Antonio area. Stephen, do you know who developed Ashley spinach? I'm not sure if it's Ashley or Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful. We've got some purple kale growing over here as well. So this is uh, this purple color is going to mean that this plant is high in anthocyanins, which are uh, an antioxidant. So that's going to be super healthy for you. Yeah, that sounds great. It's so soft. It's not like rubbery. Can we swap to the phone audio? Is that possible? Uh, Right, show us how it's done. All right. You got us. Just take a little speed. Oh, that's a really good one. Yeah. Oh, God. The honey really comes out. But this does taste the vinegariness. Oh, yeah. Herbal notes. Yeah. 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 Y
Uh, I'm, I'm here. To, I see Adam's face right now. Virtual Productions, like, y'all have done so much for us to make this a reality. Uh, it's gone so smoothly. Could not have done it without y'all. So Adam and Susan, y'all are the... They, y'all, they're the real MVPs, actually. Um, and so, you know, I'm going to go ahead and give y'all one more little look at Gardopia behind the scenes. We got uh, Mr. J. Neal here helping with the camera work and support. We got our board chair, a.k.a. PR chair right there. And then, of course, Ted coming and closing out the day. Um, it's a beautiful Saturday. What I want to say, um, if anything comes from this, is raising awareness. Um, we're thinking local, but we're acting on a global feel, hopefully, right? And we're thinking globally and acting on a local level. And as long as we continue to keep that in mind that we have to be the change, each one of us individually, and if individually we're doing it, then it happens at a large scale. San Antonio is the seventh largest metropolitan area um, in the United States. And so we have an opportunity to be a leader in our community and in our nation. Uh, people are moving more to San Antonio, to Central Texas, to Austin, along the I-35 corridor. Um, so some of the things that we do right now as individuals um, are going to determine, you know, where this region heads, right? Uh, I want to say on the local level um, that we have to hold our leaders accountable as well. And we have to work with our leaders at the city level, at the county level. Um, Y'all saw some great tape today of Garcia Street Farm and San Antonio Housing Authority and San Antonio College Eco Center. That's great that's happening. Y'all saw the food bank. Uh, they've done a lot in terms of food insecurity and emergency food assistance, in addition to the agriculture program they have going. Um, Bear County and Texas A&M AgriLife and the Bear County Master Gardeners are starting a 10-acre farm uh, down the street from here as well. So things are occurring. The, the change is happening, and we, as citizens, also have to support it. Um, you know, again, thank you all for your work. I'm not going to continue rambling on. And this is just the beginning. 2020 has been a crazy year. Uh, we're having a public health pandemic currently. And by growing food, by cultivating food at a local level, by improving our environment, uh, we can heal ourselves and we can heal the planet. So I'll leave you all with that. Uh, have a great end of 2020. And hopefully we'll see you in 2021, uh, continuing to find the silver lining amongst all the chaos of the 21st century. Adios.